Hello, welcome to Game Over Gurkaman. I'm Gurkaman, and I'm here with another episode, and once again, I have messed around with my setup. Uh, we just finished moving the last of the stuff out of our old apartment, and so now I have the microphone set up on top of a tripod in front of the TV, and I'm back on my couch as opposed to my computer chair. Uh, the last two episodes, the audio was recorded from a little ways away, so it was a little quiet, so hopefully this will rectify that. But um, I get the feeling that you'll still be able to hear the buttons of the PS3 controller clicking about. And I have not found a solution for that yet, but uh, hopefully I will one day. It actually makes me concerned about how loud it's going to be when I'm playing the Xbox 360 and if you'll be able to hear that thing fan going crazy in the background. Because that machine is loud. Uh, anyway, this is the last episode of this particular chapter, chapter 4. There's a little bit of foreshadowing there with this giant statue of Salazar. That's going to be a fun time when that kicks off. Believe me. Oh, you can't shoot that switch. What a shame. Uh, this is a little bit of a puzzle room. It's nothing too crazy, but I always kind of forget what I'm doing here in order to solve it. But basically, when we want to get this guy's hands moving so we can... Uh, for reasons. There are reasons for it, and I've totally forgotten what they are, but... Damn it. I could have sworn you come up... There's something you have to do up here to get it doing its thing. This gets me every time. So how's everyone doing today? Is uh, people enjoying the show now that it's back to the original live format? Is, is that a thing? Maybe I can shoot it. Can... You can shoot it, but nothing happens. Well then. Maybe there is something I have to do over here. I really don't remember. What a pain in the ass. Hmm. Oh, there you go. You have to run out here to trigger a cutscene. That's what it is. I hate that. You can't start solving the puzzle until you've triggered a cutscene by walking somewhere. That is dumb. I'm not a fan of that style of game design at all. Thankfully these guys won't take too long to take care of, thanks to the old Chicago typewriter. Just a minor inconvenience. But I do remember exactly what I need to do. Which is good. Jumping puzzles, exactly what you want in a game with uh, context sensitive controls. I don't know if that's something I've actually talked about on this show yet. Is the uh, context sensitive nature of the game? <laughs> they died. They did. I still can't jump over there, man. Or maybe I can now. Maybe now I can shoot that. Yeah. Okay. Now I can do that. Oh, come on. Come back down. Do I have to do it again? I do. That's kind of hilarious actually, the way he uh, jumps across like that. I like that quite a lot. Um, anyway, yeah, it's just a simple... Flitch... Flitch... Switch flipping puzzle, nothing too taxing. Platforming's super simple. But once again, it's a fun little diversion, and it's the sort of thing that keeps this game feeling fresh throughout its entire runtime. It's little, little things like that. This gun, of course, makes it a complete cakewalk. But uh, I'm alright with that. So uh, I was like games like Dead Space and that I was originally going to play through on, on New Game Plus, but I think uh, for the sake of um, you wanting to see the full experience, it doesn't... That game doesn't particularly benefit from playing New Game Plus, it just makes the game substantially a large amount easier. Whereas a game like this, it, uh... You know, because of the, uh, Chicago typewriter and other little bonus things that you can do, it kind of makes it a... interesting and more unique experience, but, uh, a lot of games just carry over and they just... The stuff goes over and it's just easier, so... I guess I'll be doing that sort of stuff on a case-by-case -case basis, but... Um... I'm not sure what I'll be playing after this. If this is still running, then... K 
can they all already be going? So what, I don't know what will run after either this or Cameo. Whichever ends first. I'm assuming that this will end first since I'm starting to get close to wrapping this up. But I don't know that for sure. I could kill those guys or I could just start walking this way. Oh my god. Bet you didn't see that coming. Unless you played it before. Oh crap, and then I forgot to hit the button. I totally forgot about the quick time. Quick time of it there. Uh, if I have to redo that, I'm gonna be really upset. Nope, awesome. Well, I'll be sure not to fall for that trick this time. These are quick time events of the worst kind. I don't feel like they add anything, anything at all to the game. And then you just have to bust out here. So this is pretty much. This is the end of this chapter when you walk out here, which is fantastic. That robot still looks really good, actually. I'm kind of impressed. The uh, animation is fantastic, too. It has a real good sense of uh, weight, which is something that a lot of games still struggle with, strangely enough. Oh, yeah. We're entering the home stretch now. You could join us, Mr. Scott Kennedy. You again. The sacred rite that's about to begin at this tower shall endow the girl with magnificent power. She will join us, become one of us. This is no ritual, it's terrorism. Isn't that a popular word these days? Not to worry. We've prepared a special ritual for you. begins. Uh, it just really solidifies Salazar's character too as being like a, he's really a coward, but you should have known that from the beginning. But I do like that little cutscene, I think it adds, adds, a, adds a bit. Ugh, he's rolling barrels. These I'm not overly fond of. It's not so bad when you've got this gun, but when you don't have it, they're a pain in the ass. You kind of have to keep like ducking ducking behind shit to not get hit, don't let him like roll by, but... But uh, yeah, this sickness is great, so you got these guys, they end up following you from the bottom. That guy was controlling the barrels the whole time, so you've got... You can pull this then to... Oh, damn it. To uh, lower barrels down onto those guys, which is pretty funny. I like that. It's a nice little touch. Uh, but yeah, this is definitely like the race. It's kind of like a gauntlet almost to try to get to uh, to get to Salazar. Hey Jess, how you doing? You don't have to be sneaky around me. It's not going up. Oh, I gotta destroy these. Is that right? No, I have to push them off. Come on, here we go. So many guys. This section, okay, so this section, now that I've done that, this is one of the most harrowing parts of the game, I think. You're trapped on this little lift and guys keep coming in here. You got these arches everywhere shooting at you. The weight of uh, these guys, when they get in, they overload the lift so it stops. Just everything's happening at once. And it's tense. It's so tense, mate. I was gonna talk about I had a topic I wanted to talk about and I forgot what it was. What was it? No, well, maybe it'll come back to me later. I definitely had something though. Oh well. Uh, for a frame of reference, uh, yesterday Edgy Numa came out and, and said they're delaying uh, Zelda, Zelda U is no longer priority for 2015. So as you can tell, this episode was recorded quite a little while ago. But I guess 
Not that I want to talk specifically about Zelda, but that's something that's worth talking about. And that's uh, the amount of polish in games now before they release. Um, a lot of people are upset that Nintendo are uh, releasing Zelda 2015 now, and I can understand that. It was one of the big releases for the year. Everyone was waiting for it, understandably. Zelda's a huge franchise. But at the same time, I'm kind of glad that they're taking the time to make sure that it's as good as it can be. And I know they've done that before and it hasn't always worked out for the best. Uh, arguably, Twilight Princess was in development for too long and they overdeveloped it. But uh, it was also moving from the GameCube to the Wii, so that had like that extra time was put to use in that respect. But um, Zelda U, there's not really a whole lot to play on the Wii U. I mean, I have a Wii U and I love it. I think it's a fantastic system, but there really isn't that many games for it. And there's not that much stuff lined up for this year outside of Star Fox and um, the new Xeno, Xeno game. But I am glad that Nintendo's taking the time to do that, and it's something that I wish a lot of other publishers would do. But most publishers seem more concerned with just getting the games out to, to uh, make their investors happy as quickly as possible. Uh, Ubisoft being a great example of that in recent times that they've released, you know, Assassin's Creed came out and that was really buggy. Um, Far Cry 4 had a lot of problems. So I'm glad to see Nintendo not going down that route. I think that is a good thing. But I can also understand why fans of Nintendo were miffed. And I think that's, that's perfectly fair as well. So I guess really... That wasn't much of a topic. I guess I kind of wanted to talk for a while for about that whole situation with the... The state of games in that respect, but I don't know what else there is to say really. There just seems to be there's a, a big push to get games out for the investors as soon as possible, regard, and then that mentality of we'll just fix it later after it comes out. It's bad. But anyway, this is going to be uh, the, the boss sells. Uh, I kind of want to show you a bit of what it's like, so I'm going to swap to the rifle just for, um, for a second. is over. She left with my men to an island. What? I think it's time I paid my due respects towards her impressive and stubborn will. Mr. Kennedy, welcome. Guess after this, there'll be one less to worry about. So this guy is generally actually quite a difficult boss. Um, obviously with the Chicago typewriter, that's not going to be the case. But uh, the first time you play through this, it's, it's difficult. It's really difficult. But uh, the gangs are the same regardless, so I am going to actually just go back to the Chicago typewriter. Basically, so you got... where is he? Floating around here. Shoot him in the eye. He doesn't like that. Oh no. I just got picked up, didn't I? I did. Ouch. That's bad. You don't want to be down here. He is hard to uh, dodge his attack sometimes, but essentially you want to shoot him in the eye and that gets him all mad and then Salazar pops out of his back. Then you shoot Salazar a bunch of times. It's very straightforward mechanically, but there is a lot to keep track of because there's these tentacles moving around. They have several different patterns. There we go, there's a shot of cells over there. And simple as that. Normally it obviously takes a bit longer than that to do.
We don't have time for that. It's a very beautiful looking boss. Not obviously it's not pretty, but it, uh, graphically I think it's very impressive. It has a great da damp, wet, slimy look, which I really appreciate. Of course, the game does the chapter doesn't just end there. We have to get to the island, and the only way to the island is to take a boat. So I guess gonna repel down here, which is the only other time I think that that repel animation is actually <laughs> used in the whole game. And we're going to net ourselves a boat. Let's have a look see at here. Oh, there's not really a whole lot to look at, just some mist and fog. And if we're going to get this elevator down. Nice and easy. Lovely. And then I believe down here there just happens to be a boat just sitting there waiting for us. Just generously left there by Salazar or someone. They must have known we were coming and they didn't want us to not be able to follow them. Need a ride, handsome? <laughs> okay. And that's that. <sighs> Under five next time. So thank you again for joining me. Hope you had a good time. I hope this one sounded better than the last one now that I got the microphone set up a little bit differently. I guess I won't really know until I go to edit it. But uh, thanks for your time. Hope you had a good time. I did, because I shot things. Uh, if you enjoyed this, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Leave me comments, because comments are fun, and I will always respond. And uh, I'll catch you next time. <laughs>